Win, win ratio and every pro likes inside more. I don't know what more. you're talking about. Oh, my, my bad, my bad. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, blue side, um, everyone wants, everyone always picks blue side. Yeah. If you're giving the choice, blue side is always what you go for. It has a, it, the double golem advantage for bottom lane. It has, um, I feel like it has better drag control and just different and easier gank routes, except for, right. for every lane, except for, uh, I think, top, I think top. But still, they first pick Corky. <laughs> okay, well, that's actually really smart. It denies yeah. the mid Corky on the other team, and they're able to put Cop on Corky. But still, very interesting pick. I'm curious to see what CLGU would do in this that's instance. It gives up Aurelia if they want to just pick Aurelia here. Gives up Skarner if they want to just pick Skarner here. I thought Skarner first pick would have been a good choice. But Sala's still up. Skarner's still up. Ori's still up. I don't it, see why Wicked wouldn't choose Mel or Aurelia here. Like, it'd be hilarious if CLGU just picked, like, Ori Skarner here. <laughs> and just, like, completely just, like, made Curse play a new comp. They are hovering Blitz. That Ori Skarner, you can definitely throw down. Nijack, he has Morgana to play. So he can kind of close that out, get the Dark Bindings on a Skarner, and really shut down the initiation. So we'll have to see. You do have Blitz Amumu. Glap, gap closers and gap bringers, if you will. I, 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 I love Blitz. In. I did is getting locked in. Wow. I absolutely love Blitz. He, he is the most unique support. It allows you to play the most different level one strategies of any support in the game. And the Moomoo is just like, it's fun to watch because he can almost <laughs> kill stuff by himself. Due to his, and we his, may, uh, Snoopy may even damage. choose, depending on what they choose top, whether it's just Bruiser or, or Tanky. You may go for the DFG build as well. Yeah, no, it's it's very strong on, on him on this current patch, and I, I just think a Mumu juggle is pretty underrated right now. A lot more people are picking them up. Would you jungle a Mumu? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, such absolutely. A, such a sick that? champion. He eats hats and he jungles a Mumu. Wow, wow. Fantastic. We're right. going for a Fiddle more. That's actually really smart. There is the Morgana, yep. It, it prevents the Blitzcrank cooks from landing on key important targets, and it, it stops the Amumu ulti initiation. Advantage toss to fear. The Blitz, however, uh, a little bit questionable, but it's something that Elements has played a lot, and it's very consistent on. Last time they played this, Elements was able to single-handedly win the bottom lane against uh, Reddit Nation, mm -hmm. aka Quantic Gaming, and so he's hoping to reproduce the same kind of success in this game. They have the lockdown long range right now. They do have the Ari. They have the Lux. I don't. I don't see Gragas being any choice in this composition. No, Gragas would actually be very interesting. You I, think so? I would think it'd be really fun to play Gragas because Gragas actually straight up beats Morgana in lane. Or I feel like you could, but I just see Snoopy whiffing bandage tosses all day as people fly around. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> I, I would love to see a TF here. Just because I think TF is a ridiculously strong champion, especially when in played in the right hands. I don't know so much about the Caitlyn Blitz. I'm sure it's still, it'd still work out okay, but Caitlyn is a champion that really needs a, a competent, either a steroid mid-game or the ability to go like deep into late. You need to be able to force objectives with Caitlyn. So if you're going to pick Caitlyn, you have to be able to, to use Blitz to its full potential, force the early dragons, and force the either lane swaps or the, uh, the lockdown of the other AD carry. I think... It's a complete, yeah, lane, like you said, lane swap. 2v1 with Blitz is almost impossible to farm with. Cop and elements. Oh, man. <laughs> uh. I <laughs> am interested to see if they'll like that in this time. Because it, it was used as a surprise pick once. We have Nasus here as a But if they do it again, I don't necessarily think it'll be as effective as before. Because they have a much different team comp this game. Uh, but with, with Skarner, they're able to create... I, I like the jungle pick, definitely. It's what their most consistent jungle in this tournament. And it will it, it's brought them the most success. I feel like there's a lot of shutdown for the Skarner initiate. Even with Black Shield, that, that silence. I like that a little bit better. The true stick with the cleavers. A little bit more damage and a lot of tank coming from Curse this right. game. The issue is that it... There isn't really much initiation, so they're like, if they ever fall behind in lane, they're gonna have a really, it's gonna be really problematic for them to just run through the team, and that's really what they have to do to get to the back line. 
With this time, with this comp last time, it was mainly just split push for Ooh. Boy Boy on Nasus. They do lock in the Twisted Fate, something we've not seen from Frog in this tournament. And it's going to be against that uh, Nijaki's Morgana in mid. So as they swap around, cop on Nasus now. Just lock it. Keep it. <laughs> I, I, I love TF. I'm very yeah. curious to see what they play. Is, is Frog going to stick with Cleanse, though? That's a real question. It's Cleanse does really, really well against Morgana, Fiddle, really, really well against Wither. So if he sticks with Cleanse, I'll know he won't be looking to go aggressive middle, won't be looking for kills. He's just looking to be farm out and make plays. If he switches to Ignite, he may look to to gank a lot more individually and not wait for Snoop A. Both teams, two members of Pope, he can get wild cards out as well as Yellow P. You get Cleavers and Cop at level 6 to Pope, so both of these teams know where you're going to see really hard initiations under turrets. It's really not going to be someone getting chunked down and then someone out of position. These are going to be all-ins from both teams, especially if somebody gets hooked. It's not going to look good. But like you said, the Black Shield, a good counter to that, and St. Vicious has been very successful on Mundo early game, so we'll have to see something coming right. from in here. I think this game will really come down to how well... Crepo plays Blitz because Blitzcrank is a game changer. He's the like I said before, he's the his level one is entirely dependent on what you want to do. Its limitations are what your team will want to do rather than like the limitations of the champion. Because he can pull buffs to deny mm -hmm. at least ten seconds of them running all the way around. He's able to create uh, unique positions where you're able to right. steal buffs from in directions that you normally wouldn't be able to go to, in in places where you need specific wards to find. And so. He's a very strong champion. I think multiple teams are picking him up now. He's first pick worthy, 100%. I like the fact that you said and pointed out that he creates the most level one opportunities. Because it is true, in lane or out of lane, as you are explaining, the buffs. And then in lane, the 2v1 swap, even if you don't 2v1 swap. He, he also has the best Baron control of any champion in the game. And so when you're doing those Baron fights and you want to win the Baron fights, if you have Blitz, you, your, Baron fight, your Baron control becomes automatically stronger. Yeah. And, and that's, so that's why it's so hard to lose when your head is blitz. Like I've seen it happen a couple times. Mainly, it, bl it blitz messes up. But if you're able to play a very consistent blitz crank, you're one of the best. <laughs> the, one of the best uh, champions in the game. All right, guys. Oh my. <laughs> Let's get this down for the real one. We haven't done this yet, this tournament. They did it in some collegiate matches, but let's hear it for the pro teams. Ladies and gentlemen, Game 5 here. Curse looking to take down Chronologic Europe. If you want Curse to take Game 5, let me hear you for Curse Gaming. <laughs> and if you guys looking for Counter Logic Europe, looking to show the North America team still have some work to do, let me hear you for Counter Logic Europe. Oh, man. And then I think there's a little bit of TSM in there too, so good luck to TSM. Oh, <laughs> uh, we see a very ballsy invade from CLGU. I like it. They have a very strong level one. And but also, Curse is a strong level one as well with uh, Jackie and Elements putting that multiple silence. They're, that's such a strange area to camp for level one, especially with no war coverage on either on any angle. Like I feel like if you're going to do that, you have to have a ward either on the approach or on the opposite side. That's a very unique ward location. They have Crepa warded from over the double golem wall just to make sure no one was in there. Oh man. So very, very smart play here. And they're they're traveling as five. Why would Alright. <laughs> they're what? all gonna just participate in the experience of Wraiths. It's great. It's you know team bonding, they're getting together here two minutes. Oh in. they're looking to invade blue. Okay. In the meantime, they lose red for it, though. So at best, this is a, this is a split at level one. Wow. So it looks like each team making the other their own jungle for the beginning of this matchup. The, the issue is that this makes Voy waste teleport to go back top. And so I feel like even though they split buffs, CLGU comes out slightly ahead. Especially if they get in a bad position here. Oh, Voy Boy stays. And he picks up blue Oh, buff. wow. They are on. They force Crepo's flash. Although that's still one of a very strong lane with Blitzcrank. They're going to have to play that a little bit more passive. Okay, so never mind. They gave Voy the blue buff, so he's able to lane top better. He decides not to TP up top. Very, very surprising. I think that may be the best option. There's and the hook Crepo gets a good Ooh. hook there. Yep. A 
little bit of quick damage. Like I said, the flash is gonna not stop them from big, big engages, but they'll still try to go for them. Caitlyn, the very the most lane dominating AD champion in the game because she has 650 range. Same vicious set behind quite far. You can see just how hurt he is at level two, moving around his jungle. He isn't that far behind Snoopy, actually, and looks to be ahead of him as he clears this uh, this wave. But does he have enough to continue on? Snoopy actually looking to come out here. He does not have bandage toss yet. If, if he actually he, hasn't taken skill if, number two. If he cuts, he has not taken skill two. Mundo here and kills him. That would be incredibly smart of Snoopy. He should wait. He should wait. He he should wait blue. For it. Oh, oh. He's gonna go out. He he of course wouldn't know that that that's where. Uh, Mundo, Mundo will be going there with low health, but if he predicts it correctly, that'd be that'd be so smart. Still okay. waiting to take that second level. Good damage here onto Frog and Nijacky going in, gets the yellow card, forces the turn. And the wild cards go. It's Snoop's just gonna make some tea. Oh, they're gonna go ahead and three man it, which ah No wonder Froggen was trying to ditch out a lane towards that top side. They go for the bandage toss in, and he actually waited for his team to take the bandage toss skill, so he does not get tanned from that. Oh! He throws a curse, or he throws a curse, throws a cleaver in there. The equilibrium strike only puts Saint off of his blue, but that means two oh, blues now resets. going to CLG. No, no, this or is one really blue, bad. Rather. It resets so that Morgana can can come at a better angle. Nasus should have showed up here. They did, they did not expect that it would reset. I guess since they had no vision, they couldn't tell. But if they uh, if they did have vision, it would have been really, really bad. <laughs> okay, get some free Pokemon Froggen. Not a big deal for Froggen. He barely takes 150 damage worth of uh, harass, and so he can just heal up with a health pot. And they they take the the jungle convincingly. The jungle lead. Yeah, so they really cleaned that one up after losing their own blue. They were just very, very late, able to pick up the other one, orchestrated well between top and middle. Like you said, no movement from Nasus, even after St. Vicious didn't take that much damage. Morgana was on the move as well. Looked like they could have pinched that very well. Five minutes into the game, kind of just all even here. There's only a hundred gold deficit. Cop, not without us, not with a support down bottom. Crepo should have his flash back up. Actually, he's got quite a bit to go on that. 80 seconds, so just over a minute, and look to be forcing this one. He's just getting in front of the minions and really zoning out Cop. But it's such a high threat in lane. If he ever lands a hook in the Power Fist, you're going to be pulled way out of position. You can't trade because the hook forces you into their creep camp, and the creeps will all turn on you if they look to trade. That's the biggest thing. We have movement from St. Vicious coming down towards the bottom. Now the early game has been very good for him. Looks like he's gonna be forced to turn back. He doesn't like the angle he's coming in on and he feels that he'll be wasting time. A lot of his lanes are either just pushed or not anywhere, so Saint's forced to go back to his jungle. Yep, and Mumu picks up the first gold pretend of uh, the game. It looks like, yes, the first gold pretend of the game yeah. with the AP gold pretend. Going for the death fire, the face punch of Mumu on bandage toss. It's like, you know, he's going to teleport this time? He just walked up. No, he's going to walk back to lane he, again. At this point, I wouldn't teleport if I was him either. Like, he wouldn't... Oh, right. You're not missing out. Yeah, he wouldn't miss that much. Right. And there, he really should save teleport for a bad... Uh, for a play bottom. Because he really wants to be able to turn the ganks that happen bottom. Like, this right here. Wait, wait, wait. If... Oh, yeah, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe he's just focused on the bottom lane too much to see behind him. But that was a great move. Snoopy trying to make something count, dodging all the words to go all the way around Tribush. But St. Vicious in the right spot at the right time. Right. We have a really up couple CS stop. But there's a big wave pushing to avoid. He's, he's only going to be down like, like less than 10 CS, I think, after the whole wave pushes. We could just looking to shove, doing nothing too crazy. If Crapple can get this right here. Oh, where is... Oh, good that fear, fear does is, not allow him to grab. Yep. That was clutch. The fear is really, really annoying. Best uh, single target CC in the game. Uh, There's not the Soul Spirit. Shackle on to Frog and the Black Shield is down. He flashes over to Raze before it hits. And the cleanse will allow him to walk out of the tormented soil. Very good positioning by Frog and to give himself that exit. Ultimate from Wicked up top is going to push that lane. Probably looked it back here. No. Oh. Snoopy's gonna dip down to the side. However, there is a ward there. Will they really go on this? TF ulti coming up. He's trying to get in range. You can Jackie's see him. Kill him. Jackie's gonna kill him. That's a really bad wow, position. Are you doing, Froggen? He, he tried to put himself screen, up there, but he doesn't have flash. Wow. Never mind. Froggen stays alive. Two very, telegraph very risky there for Froggen. 
Great job by Nijacky though, really reading these situations for his team, and he just prevented a big gank to come in. So we have Saint going toward their blue buff. Perfect okay. movement. You, you no trouble from, from Nijacky, and you just saw Mumu top. So you're going to have at least enough time to be on the way out exactly when he gets there. Exactly. Uh, it's just a very smart movement. Just because Froggen was low. They yep. saw that they had the opportunity. To, even if they the other team had collapsed, they would have had the advantage with Morgana, even without ulti. CLGU knows that uh, she got blue buff. Which means this lets top lane get blue buff to allow him to better play the matchup top. Boy, boy, he, looks, oh, he looks to be going back here. Might stay if he pushes the lane fast enough. Looks like he's just going to keep with this one. Nasus now 760 gold there. Finishes the ninja tabi as well as his gold item or gold generation item. The wards being put out as well as Yellow Pete putting some traps down for coverage down bottom. I'm actually surprised he got, went Tabby over Mercs here because there's so much CC in this game. I feel like Mercs Didn't is we go almost through this required. Last oh, for, for, okay. I thought you were talking about Aurelia. No, no, <laughs> It's no, like, no. wait a minute. We went through this last game. No, for, uh... That's right, for... Nah, yeah, the other team has CC on almost every single... They have CC on every single person on their team. So, it's really weird to see an early Ninja Tabby buy when off 700 gold, he could have just bought a Chain Vest. I feel like that would have been a better buy. It lets him stay in lane though, and that's, that's maybe all that he needs. Blood Boy getting harassed down quite a bit. I don't know, Wicked isn't finalizing this fight yet. He probably doesn't have any wards, and he could just wait. Snoopy to come up top. They could really get down on a kill here. And this is how I expect the lane to play when uh, you don't have a jungle camp. So when he was bottom, and they played the same additional, the same matchup there, it wasn't as bad. But here, it's like, it's. Really ridiculous. You can expect the ultimate quite soon from Boy Boy. There he throws it on with the ignite. He's gonna just boost his health. Not really a heal there, so only affecting the health pot with the ignite. And Wicked is going to have the upper hand in this lane. The ghost is still up for Nasus, but his ignite is down. Boy Boy, however, with his ultimate could probably finish the kill. That's gonna be coming up quite quick, only on a 70 second cooldown. Froggen in mid, quite low CS for him and for 10 minutes. About 60 there, 100 minions have spawned, so he's falling behind to the 81 of Nijacky. Just, I think the push for Morgana and the dark bindings he's been hitting has been too much for uh, Froggen to just stay in range. Great zoning there in mid. The two good plays by Jackie here, as well as the blue buff steal, allowed them to pull ahead of Froggen. I think this is the first time I've seen Froggen down CS this, this entire tournament, which just speaks volumes about Froggen's ability to uh, last hit. See that lane still pushed. That has been frozen there for Wicked for the last two minutes. Boy Boy is forced to queue these minions as they get down. And as this he has it up, comes in. that ward is still there. Oh, he's going in around. He will have the time to get to the ultimate for Nasus. Is down. He has ghosted. And he looks to be getting out of this one. Dodging by backpedaling on that. But there's just too much damage. There is the ultimate from Wicked. A few more blades. The, the cry goes down and he grabs it with despair. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. See, Wicked is an experienced Aurelia player and understands that they're both at max health and he E's, he'll get the stun. So over there, he didn't even risk it. He didn't try the Q and then E for the slow. He flashed and then E for the stu guaranteed stun. And that's what allowed them to secure that kill. Even with Snoopy missing his bandage toss. As soon as Nijack, he saw that aggression going down, you can see Froggen's health. He went super aggressive on middle. More to his right, he's been winning that lane. So very good play by Nijacky to keep that advantage in his lane, seeing that top is falling behind. And the minute top, the this matchup top falls behind, I feel, I feel like it's whoever uh, falls behind first loses the matchup. Such good poke from Nijacky. He's just getting every dark binding to land. He even looked to to crest those minions to the left. He might even walk and try to get another dark binding here. He goes, no, yes, he goes to throw it in. So our black shield into soul shackle, but it just killed Snoopy before the second proc. Fiddlesticks going down as well. Can they catch? No, they're not going to go ahead and chase. They, they see Aurelia is coming, or they, they sense Aurelia is coming. Really, really smart uh, play there by the Fiddlesticks. Unfortunately, they traded one for one, but still probably came out on top there. Oh, grab on the Nijacky. Forced to just take a few turret shots. Great grab there. Boy Boy taking harass top. Forced to wither. So much damage even through the wither. So good onto Void Boy, and he's just continuously right. forced out of lane. Yep. Look at bottom lane. You see, Kaylin. Oh, Kaylin's doing a good job. Bottom lane. 
what, 1v1. There's, uh, it seems to be even then. Never mind. I thought Kaylin <laughs> was looking to bully uh, Corky as the, both the supports right. leave. However, it seems like Corky's immediate burst damage is too high for uh, any AD carry really to deal with. That's just, that's the reason why he's so strong. I think if if, if Cop can get that lucky phage proc here, he can really just go ham on this one. Yellow Pete's going to be forced to caliber net away, come back into it, and if Cop can do it again, you really have a good harassment on this lane. He just has to be careful of his exit. These traps could really mean the end of him. St. Vicious getting that Oracle, so 13 minutes to clean it out. And we're going to see Snoopy giving that blue buff over to Froggen. Hopefully he'll have a little bit better time here. Nijack, he does have double, so even with those auto attacks after Dark Binding, just helping that much. Jackie actually has Froggen going Merc Treads first. It's very, very rare I see that happen coming out from uh, any champion, but I guess it's against Morgana, it's almost required at this point. Morgana and Nasus, you really can't afford to risk too much in that uh, combo. So getting Merc Treads, that's behind TF's damage quite a bit, even off ganks. And he looks like he has a go pretend, hopefully getting an early, uh, or like a, whatchamacallit, a DFG rush. Not to mention those Merc Treads along with the Summoner spell Cleanse, so he's definitely taking into consideration the crowd control. Mm -hmm. The game is pretty even so far. Uh, the real big problem is that Boy is kind of really far behind top. But in terms of the other lanes, Jackie's making up for a mid. And Saint's been doing really well clearing wards, alleviating uh, lane pressure. Saint actually down bottom. So where's the next move here? Wicked has been pushing his lane out quite a bit top. They've been pushing out Froggen in mid. When do they come down for Dragon? Oh, oh great grab God. onto Elements and Fiddlesticks with the fear, but he will go down. And you know what? I was just saying it. This would be a great time for Dragon. <laughs> yeah, no. It, the thing about CLG use, they just they don't need a force Dragon. They can just slowly wait for it. They wait till someone they someone goes top. They defeat Wicked because Wicked's so strong. Oh, it looks like we'll go back to that replay real, real, real quick, and I'll talk about it later. So. Elements just get, gets hooked into this trap. Real bad positioning there. And he just dies immediately. That was great positioning by them as well. Ward had just died in that. And as you were saying, with the, with the dragon. Oh, it's, it's just they have to send two top to stop Wicked. Right. And then as soon as they send two top, they can just four man force dragon. No reason to, do, to risk going too hard in on it. The ultimate twisted advance going down. And he Puts himself on the other side of the wall. I like it. Especially because Morgana's greatest strength is in that level 6 through 9, 6 through 10, 6 through 11 phase. Uh, you really can't win a team fight against her. If the, if the Morgana player knows what she's doing, I've seen many Morgan teams force the level 6 to level 9 team fight and just immediately crush everyone because their ulti is just so powerful at that time. Going in on Boy Boy. He is going to throw his ulti down, and here comes St. Vicious. Snoopy just on the edge of this one, and so Tanky gonna throw down the altar. Curse of the sad mummy as he cries all over. The blade surge oh, the gets him Ionic away from the Nasus damage. Kill. He's able to use the bush to dodge. The wither is down. Oh, he stuns with equilibrium strike. One more Q, and Boy Boy does pick up the kill. But amazing kiting coming from Wicked. Wow, really, really, really good last hit on the Ionic Spark. I did not expect that spark damage to do that much to get the kill. Great equilibrium strike there to just lock down. I really thought he was going to get out without dying. That would have been amazing. The pole looking for over the wall here. They're staying on that bottom side of the turret. They now see Crepo, and he's going to be forced out of that position. Nijak. Ooh, is this going to be ulti? Yeah, lane. they're going to go for a kill on Tsubi. He's dead, 100%. Snoopy, really good job by much. Jackie. So, should have just walked away. Why would Snoopy stay there? Uh, he didn't have vision on top lane. They didn't know that Jackie came in top because they only uh, curse has a ward up there. So he literally just stayed behind the pillar and shot a skill shot. When a skill shot comes in from an right. angle that you don't see, it becomes invisible for the start of the cast. This is true. Yeah, Jackie able to get a 17 minute death cap. Deciding to skip the Zanyas. I'm actually pretty surprised at that. I think he realizes that his team needs damage, but still. I don't know if it was worth giving up Azania's rush for it. It was everything he had. Yep. Top lane behind 60 CS now. And it really goes to show how important, how snowballing top lane is. If Void gotten an early kill, imagine how this lane would have gone. The same would have gone the first game in the series. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one time I think they, they pulled out the hand that they've already shown.
And the CLG definitely took a different approach to it. They've been going at this completely different. There's invading by both teams, but Snoopy did a great job of getting himself back over to the other blue, and that's really where they took control. As you said, we didn't see uh, Ness or Voiboy Boy coming down to help that situation, and things kind of started to spiral out of control from there. And look how defensively bottom lane curse lane is, is playing. They're not going aggressive at all, even if they see members of the, on the map, just because the TF pressure makes them play uh, really safe. Like TF, TF just by being mid creates a lot of pressure on the side lanes. That a lot of pressure that really isn't like quantifiable. Really, it's it's something that's like that you can't judge. Yeah, that was awful. Boy, boy, boy just stands there. But, oh, oh, he taunted Wicked. And Wicked said, oh, what wow. about it? Takes him down to a tenth of his health. Wow. And Wicked not even going for a standard build this game. He buys a, a Merc Treads immediately, realizes Wither is the issue in this matchup, and then builds a Phage instead of going for the Wits End, which I, which I respect. It's a really, really smart idea. On to Nijacky, a little telegraph there as Snoopy was coming in a little too far from the side, but they look maybe to go back in on this one. And count, or Kite in the counter gank. St. Vicious off to the side. And Nijacky, 165 to 157 of Froggen. The first time we've seen him on Twisted Fate this tournament. And not doing too stellar, but not doing lackluster either. Really keeping that lane into, you know, as you would say, a skill matchup. The two kills, however, coming in with Nijack, he just exceptional play in his roaming around the map. And they're looking to just force bottom lane. They, I'm pretty sure they saw that Fiddle had to go back. And in this 4v4, uh, they're taking a 4v3 and they know they can take it. TF ultis and just ultis back middle. Really smart, he ultis for vision. Not a lot of TFs do that. But they went to be 100% secure in their safety. Down here, it looks like it's going to be the full oh, attack. The yep. ignite was used, and Wicked picks himself up a kill, whether or not that double buff just absolutely terror in lane for him on Aurelia. Yep, and Void now gets the blue buff that, or uh, Wicked gets the blue buff that Void had. Yep. So Wicked is such a strong presence top lane now. Bottom, Bottom lane looking lane to make aggression. a play. Oh, a little bit wow. too much. Surprise coming from Fiddle. They all actually flash in for this one. They do find Yellow Pete. Looks like St. Vicious is pretty hungry, but he will back off eventually. Two going in towards mid, and you can see Counter Logic trying to create that counter pressure as they see their lanes getting pushed. Top lane doing well, bottom lane getting pushed, so let's go for mid. I mean, you look at the, the CS wave that Top is missing there. That's at least, I think he had missed at least two waves there. And There's gonna be another one now. Yeah, the top lane just looking very, very grim. 90 CS difference now. That's, that's quite a bit. Especially at uh, 20 minutes, 90 CS is about half the creep wave. And they're just waiting for this, for this gank. Boy's actually playing really smart, but I don't know if he realizes that this, they're, they're waiting this I long like this for this. Really, should go all the way around that backside. Amumu to push him this in. Wicked has flash, he may indeed go for it. The Equilibrium Strike would easily get a Moose Bandage Toss in. In time, there's the Blade They're Surge. Equilibrium it. Strike is they right there. The He's going to get inside of this. Throwing down Curse of the Sad Mummy first. Boy Boy has just gone to lane and finds himself going down again. You see Froggen teleporting in for the kill. Really was just trying to get some damage down. Yep. Very, very smart play by CLGU. Knowing that Boy is very weak and they can look to just pick him off and get free gold off him. So, a huge weak point now. For Curse, Boy Boy going down time after time, not able to finish that Frozen Heart as early as last time and really bring this team into a, uh, a fighting position for five on fives, and they're going to be missing that as well. St. Vicious again going for his very tanky build. Probably see him coming into that uh, Randuin's quite soon. And finally, we have the bottom lane turret taken by CLGU. Caitlyn literally has been down there for 22 minutes, and finally they got it <laughs> very slowly chipping away there. They did go Infinity Edge. They're going to be able to burst out that damage. They don't have the Nunu that we've seen so commonly picked throughout this tournament. And Froggen goes a DFG uh, Lich Bane build, which is very unique, but it's it's also it's it's pretty strong as well. DFG is just so strong in this patch, giving you a lot of much needed CDR that you don't normally get from an aggressive or, or from an offensive item. We're 23 minutes into this one, Scara. 
good amount of gold lead. 6,000 gold lead at 7 to 4. Not too many turrets down. Where's the entry for the next fight? Counter Logic with a pretty good lead here. Uh, what are they looking for? I think if they can just force a fight here, Wicked is so strong. He has oh. so strong right here. Stop Saint Vicious there. They know the grab is down. Saint, however, taking a bit too much damage. They turn off of this. If Krepo just hooks blue. Oh, whoa. Well, Elements a little out there. It's going to be the Destiny in from Frog, and they clean up one. And now it's going to be a retreat coming in from Curse. The blue up will go over to CLGEU, and they start to control the jungle, slowly controlling this snowball, rolling it down the hill. That's Not even needing Wicked for that fight. That was really Curse smart. For the, yeah, with, with, the, with the TF ulti, they were able to see the Elements split off. And against any other team, like splitting off like that is fine. But against a TF, you cannot do that. You have to stay here and back out. Wicked having a Trinity Force and his Ionic Spark with Merc Treads, he's... I think the most farmed champion in the game right now. And really, no one can 1v1 them. Wicked just could just look to split push all game. That's it. I'd say this would be a perfect time to push that bottom wave. Just get it out. Even if you show too many members, you have a Moomoo top as well. And you have your whole team covering that. Yep, the Yellow Pete just has vision of wards. People trying to cover that. Mid third curse is going to be lost. It looks like Pete's going to back. They got there quite quickly. Curse is trying to put the pressure on now. Saint got grabbed. I don't think too much is going to come out of this. A little too tanky for just one grab. Right, still a 7k gold lead, but uh, you need turrets to get back into the game. So, very smart play by the Curse. Overdrive is on Crepo again, I'm looking for an initiation here. CLG with a really great way to start these fights, whether they want to get into the fight or pull somebody out of the fight, they have both options. It's really up to Nijacky to hit those uh, black shields, dark bindings, well, to start off the fight for them. Fiddlesticks not doing too much damage for his team yet. Really just going for damage reduction for himself. Can't even get the aura items out, but he's helping with the map control. You can see how many uh, wards being placed around here by CLG EU just to keep vision. And the same coming out from Curse. Ooh, boy is dead here. Boy Boy is not having a good day. Throws on the ultimate right away. Has St. Vicious on the outside, but here comes Destiny as well. It's going to be Froggen joining the fight. Jackie fell as well. Possibly, yes, Jackie finds that. The wild cards go through, but it's going to be Wicked picking it up. They are going to pressure top lane here. It looks like we could have some pressure onto Cop. You will have the Valkyrie away on this one. The ultimate coming from Crepo misses there. Overdrive should he be able get to get in range. Oh. There is the grab. The, the punch up. And it looks like if he just exhausts. Just him down here. Good burst. I like how Crepo just stood in front of that to take the Sheen procs. And it was all Yellow Pete with Infinity Edge damage. Mm -hmm. Crepo was very confident in the fact that he didn't need to use Exhaust. It was up there, but he realized that they could just outplay and save the Summoner spell, which is very smart. He has it sustained. He has another Ruby Crystal on top of his Heart of Gold, so he did have a good amount of HP. That burst looked scary at first. The crowd control is just perfect. I figure Yellow Pete would have taken the time to lay down a trap and just consistently stack it, but they said, we have enough damage, let's just clean this up. Yep, Jackie's still a little bit away from his uh, Zhonya, so they really, it's really going to be hard for the team fight without it. He's, he has 1,500 gold to go, so he just picked up his large rod. Looks like we're gonna get a dragon here for Snoopy. The Baron is still up. I think teams, at least CLGEU is ready with the damage to take Dragon, or at least dance it out. I don't think they're